This is Game Tech, where we break down the tech that drives the games we love. And one of the many things we love about PC gaming, options. Now when it comes to graphics, it's easy to be overwhelmed since there are so many damn options. And sometimes it's not even clear as to what they do. So today, we're gonna make things a little easier for you and dig deeper into one in particular, anti-aliasing. Since digital images are made up of discrete pixels, any round or slanted object is gonna have aliasing or jagged edges. So to smooth out that staircase effect, you use anti-aliasing. It essentially blends the colors around the edges to create the illusion of a smooth image. But this takes computing power to perform in real time, sometimes a whole lot. The higher the sample rate, or how heavy the effect is applied, the more taxing it is on your hardware. And there are several methods of anti-aliasing, some less demanding on your hardware, some produce a better image quality. So let's run through all the different ways we can grind out those rough edges. Super sampling or SSAA effectively forces the game to generate a higher resolution picture and scale it down to fit your display's resolution. It's as if you're artificially increasing the pixel density of your screen and the result is a super fine image that looks real clean. It's the best looking solution, but damn does it bring your system to its knees. It's worth noting that the upcoming Xbox One X will implement super sampling for users on 1080p displays. So you'll be getting a pretty sweet benefit even if you're not on 4K yet. Multi-sample anti-aliasing or MSAA targets specific edges from pieces of geometry in a game world and takes color samples from adjacent pixels to project a blend of those colors. The illusion of smoothness around an otherwise jagged object is created. The higher the number of samples, the better the blend of colors, but the more demanding it is on your GPU. Fast Approximate Anti-Aliasing, or FXAA, is a blanket approach to smoothing out an image. It's essentially a filter. Instead of analyzing each frame and calculating geometry like MSAA, FXAA applies the smoothing effect to an entire image indiscriminately. It's faster for the GPU to perform, but it results in a blurrier image compared to other methods. MLAA, or Morphological Anti-Aliasing, is an AMD technology, kind of like FXAA. It applies a filter that looks at contrasting pixels to smooth out edges, but still has a blurry look to it, although it's a bit easier on your hardware. SMAA, or Subpixel Morphological Anti-Aliasing, sort of strikes a balance between FXAA and MSAA in both performance demand and image quality. It applies a filter like FXAA with a little less blur, but still targets edges to create color averages like MSAA. Temporal anti-aliasing, or TXAA, is similar to MSAA, but it's a bit more efficient. TXAA uses previous frame data to create color samples in the current frame. It also uses temporal filtering tech for additional smoothness, and it helps reduce flickering or shimmering of objects in motion that may occur in other methods. And we can't get away from a discussion of anti-aliasing without mentioning resolution specifically. It's simply the number of horizontal pixels by vertical pixels on your screen. The more there are, the better the games will look. And no matter what, it's best to run games at your display's native resolution before applying any anti-aliasing for the best image quality. But at 4K, jagged edges are a lot less noticeable because of sheer pixel density, which is why it's so coveted. 4K means 8,294,400 pixels on a screen, four times as much as standard 1080p. So I'd even say anti-aliasing isn't really necessary at 4K. Although 4K is performance heavy. If you want to know a bit more about resolution and its relationship to performance, check out our previous video on why 4K matters for gaming. No matter what settings you choose, you'll have to strike a balance between graphical quality and frame rates that you deem playable. These are simplified explanations of some very complex technologies, so if you want to flesh out the discussion, get in the comments. Now there's many more graphical settings that we're going to explain for you, so please subscribe to GameSpot for more game tech. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.